And then we're going to ask uh, Frank to, uh, to speak on, um, or we're going to give a presentation. Oh, he's going to give a presentation on uh, body well, cameras there, now. So. I guess I'll go up there. Yeah. Let me give you a little bit of, of context. So um, body cameras are now the, the latest and greatest um, in, in the world. Uh, we are probably the leading city of size um, in the state of Washington. So I'm wrestling with body cameras every day. And actually, even as I'm sitting here, I'm wrestling with body cameras. And I'll tell you about that in a minute. So <clears throat> much of the emphasis on body cameras is really to catch the police doing bad things. Because we all know that that's what we do. We get up in the morning and we do bad things and we continue to do bad things and I'm obviously being facetious. Um, and so there are very broad perspectives on what should be happening with body cameras. Um, the far left um, position is that an officer should come to work. They should put on their body camera. Their supervisor should activate the body camera because we can't trust the police officer to do so. And at the end of their shift, their supervisor should turn off the body camera. Well, think about what you do in the course of your day. Um, you go to the bathroom. You talk to, um, always in a loving manner, your significant other. Um, you have conversations with your children, always again in a very loving manner. You interact with your boss. You interact with your coworkers. Well, that extreme believes that every one of those conversations and every one of those activities in the course of your day, because you're a public official, are fodder for public release and public disclosure. So as I said, in the state of Washington, there would be really no ability to protect that. The other extreme is that um, officers should have discretion, personal discretion, um, to turn on or turn off body cameras um, depending on the circumstance. All well and good until we start to realize on the public side that body cameras record both sides of the interaction, both audio and video. So in the state of Washington, this is a um, perplexing problem because, as I said, we have very broad public records um, laws. So if you are having a fight with your next door neighbor about the height of the rose bushes in between your property and the police come to your neighbor's house for a heart attack, a kid that's out of control, whatever the call may be, Within probably about five days, um, you will have that body camera footage in its entirety. And so you get to see the innermost workings of your neighbor's house. Once you have it, you have the ability to put it on YouTube. So I'm a proponent, I'll, I'll just put that out there, of body cameras. Um, but we are treading on very dangerous waters, and we will end up with Supreme Court of the United States cases. It is inevitable. The other problem is human error. And um, last Saturday, at about, I guess it was about 7 o'clock, one of my officers um, shot somebody. Fortunately, um, did not kill the individual, and I have to be somewhat careful because it's... It, an ongoing investigation, he failed to um, activate his body camera. We've only had the body cameras up since September 1st. Um, my conjecture probably is, is that um, that was the last thing he was thinking about. He was um, with a partner. Um, they were looking for an individual who had been in, involved in stalking, who had an extensive violent criminal history. And the car actually came past them. Um, they ended up um, hitting the, cam the car as a way to stop it. Um, the, the details as we know them right now was that the individual then tried to hit the officer with the um, vehicle, um, and that caused him to, to fire the rounds that he did. Um, one of the articles that I read yesterday when I was flying out here, and my wife is, pardon the language, extremely pissed off that 
I can never let my job go, um, was from a group who was saying this is intolerable, this is unacceptable, um, we have to hang the police officer for not activating um, the body camera. Uh, he is an outstanding police officer um, who took action to preserve the safety of the community that he serves. And so um, when I get back, I'll be back in the media again, Charles, um, because we'll have a little bit of, of, of a dialogue. But let me show you this film, and then I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about it and answer some questions you may have. So um, that's part of the problem with body cameras. Actually, it's kind of, it's funny. So we're, we're dealing with technology, right? Um, and as we all know, sometimes technology works and sometimes it doesn't work. Since we've rolled out the camera, um, we have had public forums with in excess of probably about four or 500 people. Um, we've brought them out to the police academy. We've had them wear Body, cam body cameras um, in our interactive simulator. Um, this is actually footage being shown um, from the body camera. And it, it, it's not bad in terms of, of clarity's sake. Later on in the, in the newscast, we actually did a demonstration, and we do this for the public, where um, you think you're getting a perspective from the body camera, because the body camera picks up in real um, life, the noise that's generated, and, and so on and so forth. And it sounds like the person in the demonstration is getting the crap beat out of them. Um, as it turns out, there was no violence associated at all with the arrest, but the body camera was picking up the friction on the officer's uniform. It was picking up the friction in the contact as they were handcuffing the individual and magnifying it to the point like it, it sounded like the individual um, in the demo was getting um, really, as I said, severely beaten. I think th the big thing that I would urge um, is anybody contemplating um, body cameras, and really it's kind of the theme of the whole presentation, is intensive community dialogue. We still think in this business that we know all the answers to everything. And one of the most interesting things that came out of our body camera project was um, our law, legal department said that um, because of Fourth Amendment rights and our requirement to do two-party consent, New York is a one-party consent state, in Washington you need two-party consent, um, that if we went into somebody's home, we couldn't activate the body cameras unless we had affirmative consent from them to activate the cameras. So I'm doing a presentation and this woman raises her hand and says, well, if you come to my house and my husband um, has beaten me and so now you're responding to a domestic violence call and my husband says, don't record the body cam, the, the, my interview, what are you gonna do? Because clearly I'm going to want um, the, the incident recorded, my interview recorded, my injuries recorded. And so I actually, made the decision um, to, to have full recording um, if we get one party consent in the house over the objection of my law department. In another incident, um, in speaking to um, a victim's advocacy group, a woman stood up and, and we have a great relationship, she's a victim's advocate, and she said, what do you do with a child sexual abuse case, um, an adult sexual abuse? abuse case. What do you do if the victim says, don't record the body cam, you know, the, the interview? Um, and so there, we're giving our officers discretion. That if they think that that would prevent the, the victim from giving us a statement, um, they're to not use the body cameras. My wife, who's an attorney and a judge, um, said, well, I disagree with that. I think you should try to record everything because sometimes in those first moments of a critical incident, that's where you get your best testimony. And so why would you want to lose that? Another issue is persons that are in mental health crisis. And again, remember, we have to warn you or advise you that we're recording. 
So if I have somebody on the ledge of a bridge, my officer who has a body camera on has to say, sir, ma'am, I am audio and video recording this interaction. Well, we have a person in crisis on the bridge. So that has become um, a real sticking point. I'm giving my officers the discretion to not activate the body camera in that situation. Individuals on the far left are saying they shouldn't have that discretion. They have to record the interaction, regardless of the person jumps off the bridge because of the advisement, and we exacerbate the crisis. So I would ask you to watch this, uh, watch the media conversations, watch the conversations that are going to go on here in New York. Um, we are now taking government into the most private areas of your life. We're in your bathrooms. We're in your bedrooms. We're talking to victims at their worst state. And again, in the state of Washington, just like we did with marijuana, we put the body cameras out first, and now we're trying to create the laws around them. And, it, and it's similar to, to, to what we've all talked about, about the 911 tapes. It's, it's similar about building buildings in today's day and age and not putting repeaters in there so that um, radios work. We have to do a much better job on the front end and, and not always be trying to, to correct problems after the fact. So we, we legalized marijuana and now we're trying to figure out how to regulate it, right? We, we didn't think about the public health consequences of legalized marijuana. We have body cameras out there, but we haven't thought about the privacy right implications because we were so concerned about catching police officers. And police officers do some dumb shit. Believe me, I've been in this business 30 years. I've seen it all. Um, well, I can't say that because every day they do something that I never thought of. So I'm wrong when I say that. But it, we, we have to do a better job. We have to be more thoughtful. We have to be... Um, more precise in, in developing the laws, developing the policies and procedures, vetting these things with the communities we serve, or else we end up with, with disastrous situations where, at the end of the day, police officers get victimized and victims get even further traumatized because we weren't thoughtful about the process. So I'll shut up because it's between me and lunch. Um, if you have any body camera questions real quick, I'll be happy to answer them. Yes, so. <laughs> you know, I keep on thinking about what Steve was saying about, you know, so many of these births, you know, these, these uh, accidental giving birth at home, and, and I'm thinking of, you know, you call 911 and the police rush in to help this woman who's giving birth. Who would want that to be a matter of public record and put on YouTube? So I think it, there's really a privacy issue, and it's, I think it's great that this has to be publicized more. There's two sides to every uh, proposal. I'm sorry. Uh, my question is about um, people in the public who also videotape on their phone. And how does this extend, their rights extend, or uh, how do the rights of their videos extend from what you're talking about? Well, it, it's pretty much a free-for-all, right? Um, you know, I, I had a, another police shooting. It's a whole different part of the country there. We shoot a lot of people, unfortunately. I'm doing my best to stop that. But um, So we had an incident where uh, a guy had done a series of armed robberies. Our officers confronted him. Um, I was told when I arrived a few minutes after the shooting that um, we had negotiated with him on the porch. As it turned out, we hadn't negotiated with him on the porch. We had a, a, a negotiated with him through a screen door. Well, somebody in the neighborhood had the video um, of the shooting, and before I was even on the scene, it had already been put on YouTube. I mean, that's, that's the problem, right, is that there is no ability to control much of anything anymore, and these things go viral so quickly. And I agree 100% with the release of the 911 tapes. Um, I think the country is going to hear just horrific conversations. 
that's a that's a a, a very unique circumstance to some degree. The movement now is to get rid of street cameras, automated license plate readers, because that's an intrusion on people's privacy. But yet, I can walk up with my cell phone and record anything I want and put it on mass media. So this, this struggle that we're talking about here in terms of privacy and private rights and what do we do with these very sensitive communications this will become, I think, one of the biggest national discussions that we're going to have. Hold on. Yeah, wait for the mic. Wait for the mic. Are there other jurisdictions that have the body cameras that have already gotten some experience a little more like a year or two years into it? Yeah, and, and so there are, there are a number of big, small, medium-sized departments throughout the country that have them. Um, it is a very much an evolving process regardless of how long you've had them. Um, it, it's an evolving process around technology. It's a evolving process around privacy rights. <clears throat> it's an evolving process around redaction. And the problem will be is that there will never be a national policy because every state is very unique in terms particularly of the privacy piece of it and the redaction requirements. So people that are talking on a global scale and saying, well, there needs to be a model national policy, there can be at, at some level, um, but when we get to the privacy issues, that's going to go state by state by state. And so it's, it's, it's a very difficult thing to deal with. Okay, great. It's been very thoughtful, Frank. Uh, we're going to take one last question. No, we're not done yet. One last question, then we'll uh, uh, play the video while people are queuing up for uh, lunch. Oh, it worked now. Okay. Uh, yeah, thank you. I understand that you're a proponent of uh, body cameras, but um, oftentimes in a, you know controversial incidents, there's like a recording from, like you said, a private you know citizen or something like that, and the argument's always made that you know perhaps there was creative recording, you know, they, you know, it's, it's different angles because, you know, you're not as close and that can also be an issue. So, um, you know, I, I can see how body cameras can also help give the, you know, a more direct perception of what actually is going on. I do see the privacy issues, but what would you offer as a suggestion to counter that? Because, I mean, people are still going to, there's nothing that's going to stop people from recording with their own stuff and they will lease it anyway. It'll just look bad on the police officer's part if it's at a, you know, it's not showing the whole story, it's showing part of the story. So what would you suggest to replace body cameras, if anything? Well, I, I wouldn't suggest anything. As a matter of fact, my, my officers now won't leave and, and go out on post without their body cameras. And other jurisdictions around us much, that are much smaller, it's, it's the same thing. Because 99% of the time, you're seeing very good police work right, um, on officer-involved shootings or officer-involved use of force, the officers want that footage to be there to explain why they did what they did. And, and one of the things that we're, we're looking at now in terms of use of force, in, in addition to body cameras, and again, this goes maybe from learning from things like 9-11, is that use of force incident starts at the point that the call was dispatched and ends after the force has been used, right? And the person is transported to a hospital or whatever the case may be. And we have to look at these events holistically. What are all the things that led up to that event happening? And then how was it immediately dealt with? So those recordings right now, we're freezing um, the initial call taker, the dispatch, the body camera footage, because that's the only way we're going to get the complete story of what happened and why it happened and were there failures in the system that put that officer or did they put themselves in a situation where they had no alternative. And so this whole lessons learned piece becomes critically important. So I think you're going to see police officers wearing body cameras. I think what we have to do is, is wrap our arms around how do we control the release of data and how do we do it in a, in a manner that's respectful to victims, to victims' families, to the officers, so on and so forth? Eventually the information goes, 
Um, but I think, yes, we, we, we want body cameras for sure.